If you think you can't buy friends, you're wrong. And I'm here to show you exactly why. I have a new favorite teammate and it's proof that you can buy friendship. It started way back when with Mr. Jim Pocock who very kindly sent me through a cycling cap from his local cycling club, which I believe is Ottawa if memory serves me correct. Sorry Jim if I got that wrong. Jump forward, I think the next, my next favorite team member probably was Jason Arblaster who very kindly sent me through a Canyon SRAM Rafa cap and socks. Very nice indeed. He had quite a long spell at the top of the leaderboard in terms of uh, a place in my heart. Then he was blown out of the water. And to be honest, this one was pretty hard to beat. Sonia and Andreas Detail with this stunning decorative box of gingerbread for Christmas. Incredible. This, I mean, to be honest, it's taken something quite, quite special to knock them off the perch. Uh, who else was my favorite? Oh yeah, Peter Patonk Wilson. He was my favorite for a short while with the uh, that wicked t-shirt, the bike crash one where it says it didn't hurt. So yeah, Peter, you had a good run, dude, but you're, you're gonna have to up your game. Kev Stephen, just before that actually, had bought me this beautiful pink Castelli cycling cap, which uh, he gave to me in Scotland. Love that. And let's not forget, Clampy, Neil, with uh, Tenant the Goat and various pictures posted around our little um, dungeon that we were staying in of, uh, of goats and other WKG members. That was a very thoughtful gift and similar to the gingerbread, pretty hard to beat, but they have all been beaten and they've been beaten by Keith the Hoff Denton. <coughs> having witnessed the tribulations I've been having with my mountain bike pedals, particularly in the last video up there, he very kindly sent me a pair of egg beaters. And here are said egg beaters. Now straight off the bat, a pair of egg beaters plus the cleats that come with them was a total of 100 grams exactly lighter than the Shimano SPDs and cleats that I was running. Secondly, I think they look wicked in this dark gun metal color. I take back everything I said about Peter Patonks when we were in France. I think I made fun of him a little bit for his egg beater pedals. I've completely reversed my opinion. They look brilliant and as he frequently pointed out, I believe, they are just about as light as bike pedals get. They're absolutely brand spanking new out of the box. Uh, they do, they have already got a couple of little marks on them, but that is purely because with them being so new, they're a little bit tricky to clip in and out of. So I've been going back and forth, back and forth, just to try and wear them in. Uh, I've been advised that that's actually not a bad idea to try and loosen them up a little bit. There is no actual tension adjustment in the pedal itself. The way you can adjust the angle required in order to dismount is actually determined by which foot you put each cleat on. So there's one's got a mark on and the other hasn't. And I can't remember exactly which way round it is, but if you put the one with the mark on, say on your right foot and the other one on your left, it requires a shallower angle to unclip from the pedal and vice versa. So all the adjustments built into basically which foot you put the cleat on. Uh, but I, I really like them. I mean, I've ridden here and so far so good. I've not fallen off my bike. I've not had a problem unclipping and they gave me the confidence to try out that little descent just over there that I wimped out of last time. <laughs> so, so far so good, but I will jump on, do a little bit more riding and uh, give you a slightly more educated opinion. Well, that was exciting. Oh, you got to check this out too. You know, I was moaning about the fact no one makes a slidey, clippy selfie stick. Turns out you can make one yourself. The best way I can show you is I will put my phone camera on. There we go. And there it is. 
you see the slide mount there that just screws in with like a normal tripod mount and not only that it's a power bank <laughs> what an idiot i just realized what i just did i turned the gopro around so you're looking at me <laughs> how can i show you the back oh i can't anyway can you see that little flap there that's just unveiled some usb ports so i can charge the um the gopro while i'm using it and this was slightly slippery this uh this power bank to hold on to so my genius intervened and i wrapped it in some data bar tape anyway my glasses are just steamed up so i'm going to give them a quick wipe and then uh, head on down that trail there bloody nearly fell off straight away because my front wheel was in a ditch that i hadn't seen luckily i managed to unclip just in time thank you keith you might have just saved my life So I might have been brave enough to ride down this. Sadly, I'm not strong enough to ride up it. And I think I'm about to lose my footing. Oh, no, there we go, I'm all right, I'm good. Gosh, I think, hang on, brakes. <sighs> Is the steepness of that coming across? It's pretty severe. Look. I know there's steps there, by the way, but I started by trying to ride up that and thought I'd finish off by pushing. So, my conclusion after my first ride with Crank Brothers Egg Beaters. It'd actually be really unfair for me to make any kind of judgment, to be honest. What I will say is I'm definitely more inclined to persevere with these than I was with the SPDs. They are absolutely getting looser and easier to clip in and out of. In actual fact, clipping out is a doddle. Clipping in, I've struggled with on occasion but that, uh, some of that can be put down to the fact that I've just been riding my road bike and the clipping position, the cleat position is much further forward. So I'm almost dipping my toe onto the pedal before clicking down. Whereas on these, the cleat's a little bit further back. So it's like the ball of my foot that I need to apply pressure on to lock into the pedal. So I can definitely attribute some of my mishaps to that. But all in all, not much to say, I mean, <laughs> they feel fine. I've definitely been a bit braver on this ride than I was on previous ones. They're lighter, like I say, they look better. Clipping out is definitely easier. So that was my biggest concern with the SPDs. I seem to get caught quite a lot with my foot clipped in, falling sideways, having hit a root or a, a ditch or something. So from that point of view, a massive A plus. And I will revisit these in another video just to let you know if they do loosen up and the clipping in becomes a little bit more second nature to me. But anyway, Keith again, thank you so much, my friend. It's little things like this to make this group so special. So I keep sending me free stuff. <laughs> uh, on the subject of the group, just to try and answer about 17 and a half thousand questions I've had regarding the start of the Winter League. I can try and answer it all here in one go. The provisional date for the opening round currently is October 12th, which is a Saturday. And I'm thinking around 1.30 p.m. local time, British summer time. We're going to start off with a medium difficulty race. I'll reveal full details a bit nearer the time. I will also open the registration very soon. And as with previous leagues, it will be by pre-registration. The cutoff point will be one week from the start of the first race and I'll have to be really strict if you're not registered by then you won't be registered for league results you can obviously still race in fact the more the merrier even if you want to just take part in individual races please do uh, but obviously to be registered so that you receive points and are entered onto the league tables you'll need to make sure your registration is in before that closing day all of the, the finer details I will obviously put in the group I will also be looking for volunteers to help once again with compiling the points and uh, populating the league tables online. The guys last year, the results team last year, were phenomenal. And from the point where they stepped in and helped out, the updates were so frequent, so much more accurate. And 
it just took such a burden off my shoulders i'm so grateful for it so i will be hoping for the same kind of volunteers again the biggest question mark i have at the moment is categories i wanted to try and devise my own category system because we have a lot of riders that are sort of crossover between an a and a b or a b and a c a c and a d etc so the idea was to try and refine the category limits to cater for those guys better and make it just generally more oh, i'm coming into a very dark bumpy bit uh, more competitive across the board but i'm still trying to sort of fine tune that and unless i can come up with something that i really think is going to work right off the bat we will stick to the previous a b c d category and uh and work from there anyway i'm nearly home i'm going to need two hands for this bit to get me home thank you again keith you're an absolute legend and my new best friend oh hang on oh oh yeah i'm so grateful for these i really am it's absolutely absolutely shit brilliant um thank you all for watching and i will see you on the next one got to climb down off this bridge now after going back and forth just to get that one shot the life of a biking vlogger Ooh. Ooh.